Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here with a video for My Favorite Things. In today's video, I'm going to be recreating this card that design team member Toracle created with the new August 2016 release. This is the Magical Dragon stamp set, and we're going to be creating a card that has a scene on both the outside and the inside of the card. So I'm just, I went ahead and kind of pre-cut all of the pieces that we're going to be using to assemble the card, and I'm just getting everything ready here to start to create the scene pieces that we're going to put on top. So I have two pieces of white cardstock that I've trimmed down with a stitch rectangle die, and now I'm using the stitch cloud edges. I created some masks with some masking paper, and I'm going to use these to put some ink onto these background pieces, and it's going to create a cloudy sky for us to have as the base of our scene. So I'm using snow cone dye ink, and I'm just using an ink blending tool, and I'm just positioning the masks right onto the cardstock piece, and because it's masking paper, they will stick down so they're not going to move, but they lift really easy. That's what's a great thing about masking paper is it doesn't stick to your surface and rip your paper. It removes really easily, but stays stuck down while you are using it for a mask. So I'm just going to kind of move it around the cardstock piece and slowly kind of work my way up, and I'm using two different... Um, of the cloud dynamics so that I have a little bit of a variation in the cloud design and I'm just kind of lifting it up and shifting it upwards on the cardstock piece and adding the ink as I go. Now it's kind of light in the video, it's kind of hard to see, but it creates this really great billowy cloud look. It really looks realistic when you finish with it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The I find that the messier you use your inking, the more realistic they look when they're finished. So I went ahead and did both of those panels, so I have one for the inside and the outside of the card. And now I'm just kind of selecting all of the stamps that I'm going to be using to stamp out all of the pieces for the scene. So I took them all off of the backer sheet, and now I'm using my Mini Misty to kind of arrange them onto the cardstock piece so that I have them all together, and I can quickly and easily stamp them at once, and then I can go ahead and start to color them. So I just kind of shifted them on there. There is going to be an additional stamping that we're going to do because we're going to stamp the princess backwards. We're going to use the new mirror image stamp to do that. So you will see that I did stamp her in this grouping of stamps, but I don't end up using her because we only use her once um, and we use the mirror image of her. But I did end up stamping an additional prince because we use him twice. And I also stamped an additional um, of the puff of smoke, which we're actually going to be using as clouds in the scene. So now I'm going to do the mirror stamping like I said. So what I've done is I'm going to remove the foam piece from my Mini Misty. I don't want that in there for the mirror stamping. And I'm just going to take a piece of acetate. This is just a grid piece that I use in my Misty. You can use any type of acetate or plastic packaging. Anything that will kind of hold the stamp down so that you're able to um, have it stay still and be able to reposition it back into the Misty if it does shift when you use the mirror stamp. The thing, only thing I find with the mirror stamp is that it, because it's such a large surface area, it does tend to stick down onto um, both the stamp that you're stamping onto and kind of pull up that acetate, you, so you can kind of see I had to shift it back. And it does kind of stick to the paper as well, so you kind of have to peel your cardstock off. So you'll see what I, what I mean here when I do this. Now I'm just using some black ink, and the key to this is you need to work pretty quickly. You don't want that ink to dry. Um, on the stamp. So what I like to do is I like to stamp it a couple of times, which is why the Misty is a really great way to do this technique, just because it allows you to double stamp it or triple stamp it if you even want to have a lot of ink on that surface. And then you can just go ahead and stamp it down onto the cardstock panel by adding the foam back into the into the Mini Misty and then going ahead and stamping it as normal. So I finished her, I stamped her on there as a mirror image, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the coloring of all the images. So I'm not going to show all of the coloring. It did take a little bit for me to color all of the pieces, So, uh, but I am going to just kind of quickly go through the coloring of the two dragons, and then once I finish with those, I'm just going to carry on with creating the actual scenes on the cards. So I'm just using some lime greens for the dragons here, and I started off with my lightest lime green, and I fully colored both of the dragons. I like to use the lightest color first just to really saturate the image, and that way I'm able to really blend the colors together. And then I finish off the dragon with some brown accents on the um, rest of the areas on the little spines on his back and stuff, and then I went ahead, like I said, and colored the rest of the images off camera. And now for the princess image, she doesn't have a coordinating die because this is a mirror image that we created. So I'm just using my scissors to trim her out. And I'm making sure to leave a little bit of a white border around her as I cut her out, just so that she matches the rest of the images that we're using on the card because they already all have a small white border from the die cutting. And now I have all my images colored and stamped and cut out, so I'm ready to assemble the two scenes that we're going to put on the card. So I'm just taking the two little grass areas that we've cut down with the stitch edges dynamics 
and I'm adhering them both to the bottom of the scene. We're pretty much making the scenes look pretty much similar as far as the background, and then we're just gonna change up the images that we add on to the, each of the scenes. So I'm just kind of figuring out where all my pieces are gonna go here, and then I'm going to start to adhere them down onto the scene. And I'm keeping the design pretty much the exact same as what Toriko did in her card, just to show how she created that. And then I'm stamping my sentiment on here. I did stamp my sentiment directly onto the background area, um, and then I'm adding my two little images here with some foam adhesive, and that's going to finish the scene for the front of the card. So now we're going to jump into the inside area. So I'm putting the second dragon that we've colored and cut out onto that scene. I'm stamping the sentiment once again onto the background piece, and then I'm just adhering the rest of the pieces onto this panel. Now for this one here, I didn't use any foam adhesive because it's going to be on the inside of the card, so we don't want any texture on that. And then to finish it off, I'm just taking both of my scene pieces and I'm layering them onto a piece of orange cardstock. This is tangy orange cardstock. And this one is um, just a very thin mat. I barely, it's barely even visible. It's just enough to kind of break up the scene from the background of the brown card panel. And then now I have both of the pieces stuck to the card and you can see you have this great scene on both the inside and the outside of the card. Just super fun way to add more to your card design. So thanks so much to Toriko for this great design and thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.